I do talk a lot about sweeping high and slow, but if you want to get the water peel, the tear, if you want to get that working for you, just practice peeling a little faster and a little flatter. If you peel a little faster and flatter, you will get some energy in that D-loop, and that's never a bad thing. The problem can be if you try to sweep too fast and too flat, then the window of opportunity for making the cast is very small and it's more difficult. So you can experiment with high and slow, medium and faster, low and flat, energize the D-loop. And the other thing is with different fly and sink tip combinations, different sweeps, flatness and steepness of the sweep is gonna make a difference in how that particular fly cast. You might find that a certain fly casts better with a flat, powerful sweep, peeling the white rat. Reach a critical mass with your sweep, how powerful you try to make it. And if you get too, if you get too messed up with it, it'll make your casting real inconsistent. You only need so much everything. You know, you can only sweep so fast. You're much better off to get that anchor dialed in. That's what I try to do, get that anchor just right. But you may find that it might help your tempo to sweep a little faster. It might help your, you know, just the way you're put together and what works for you. So experiment a lot with what works for you and see what that is. Some guys wanted to know what it looks like from the front view, sweeping with us, or casting with the inside the box. a dandy. That thing took off. I hit the sweet spot. In Skagit casting the sweep, of course, we keep our hands inside the box. But the important thing is that you have to sweep fast enough so that the butt of the fly is aiming at the target before you forward cast. So if you sweep too fast, of course, that could lead to problems. You might blow your anchor. But if you sweep too slow and say your line isn't straightened out in the water, it's going to take extra energy and that fly is going to be sinking, especially if it's a weighted fly. And it's going to slow down the cast. You're not going to get all the efficiency and energy you need. So the sweep's got to be fast enough that it gets that fly pointing backwards at the target. And the whole D-loop has to be aiming at the target, including the fly and the last few feet of leader. It all has to be straight, probably moving backwards is best, or at least not sinking. Maybe a little, depending on the weight of your fly, but there has to be an, enough energy in that sweep to tensionize everything. Everything has to be tensioned. The fly needs to be near the surface of the water if it's really weighted can be deeper if it's not. But the idea is, if you have a D-loop and it's lined up towards the target and that fly is downstream and there's an L in it, a shaped L or a V, it's gonna suck the energy out of the cast. So you gotta get the right amount of tension. So I'm gonna experiment with some different angles of sweep and speed to see what works for this little unweighted fly. Okay, I got the uh, Angler Roost 13 9 inch 7 weight. It's got a 500 grain reel schedule short, 12, and a half, or 12 foot OPST run sink tip. 
in a non-weighted fly on three inch, three, two and a half or three feet of straight mono. If you want to add power to your forward cast, make sure that your D-loop is tensioned so there's no slack anywhere in it, especially underwater where the fly, you want the fly, butt of the fly facing the target, you don't want the fly facing downstream. So it has to go bam, bam to go. So when you're gonna try to cast farther, everything has to say the same. And why I say that, because when I cast further, especially on, on a video, I find myself, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use a little more body and a little more English, and the cast goes to shit. So, maintain the same discipline, the smoothness of the sweep, make sure you tension it enough to get the fly butt pointing towards the target, but don't get so much tension in it that you blow your anchor. You get, that you, there's a critical mass that you can reach and don't overdo it. It's all, you just need enough tension that all the wiggles and squiggles are out of that, out of the D-loop. Now I'm going to do one wrong. My anchor lands too far downstream. Sometimes a really hardy peel will straighten it out, but this is too slow of a peel. The fly sinks and the cast is thwarted. The fly lands behind me, but the bottom leg of the D-loop is totally lined up with the anchor. A good hardy sweep and the cast goes off really nice. This fly is non-weighted, so I give it a little soak before I begin my casting process after I set the anchor. I'm gonna throw on a little weighted fly so I can dig in more and get a little more traction in my peel, a little more tension. It's not the speed of the peel per se that gets you your power, it's the smoothness. Because when you try to overpower it by body English, Try to peel too fast, get too much energy in your D-loop, then you start messing up. I do. I do. I'm way better off to go smooth. Okay, so here's the fly. It's marabou. It's got dumbbell eyes. Nice big profile. It's got a stinger hook. Some Palmer marabou. It's got some schlopping on front. And little, little dumbbell eyes. I'm going to try to tension this D-loop with a little more power in my peel. Right away you'll notice when I start using dumbbell eyes, I lose distance in my cast and the cast is kind of ugly. I still don't like how I'm casting that. I edited out several of these casts but it finally worked out when I slowed down and did a continuous motion out and around. Snake poke aligns the fly with the target. Abrupt application of power gets you that. 
And finally, after many failed attempts and edited casts, I did a nice out and around. Skagit cast, and I got that after many, many, many fails. I had to change my whole deal there. This little fly sink's really good, and I had to do a continuous motion and quit thinking, okay, I'm gonna load up this D-loop and then cast forward. Just go out and around, let it load itself and cast. Don't think about it. It feels like if I do that, I'm not gonna get a big, powerful D-loop, but the opposite happens. Smooth out and around for a weighted fly. So with this weighted fly that wants to sink more, when the more out and around, a little more continuous motion. See, I'm, th I'm thinking back and forth. I need to just relax, go out and around, keep my hands in that box and trust this technique to work and not try to over muscle it. try to blow my anchor. Overpowered the sweep and blew the anchor. Let my anchor soak for a second, slowed down the sweep, and hit the sweet spot. Check out how I land this fly to the left of me, and then when it leaves the water, it's right next to me. Also, I need you to support this channel, and one of the ways you can do that is to click on the link below if you're interested in a cool beanie like this that has speakers in the earphones. You hook it up to your Bluetooth, your Bluetooth, you hook it up to your Bluetooth, and it's a very cool, simple way to listen to music or podcast, listen to music while you're practicing your casting, and support the channel. And these speakers sound awesome. If you're fixing to do a big buy on Amazon, if you click on any link I place in the description below, and anything that you buy from Amazon within that 24 hours, I'll get a commission for, and you'll be supporting the channel, and it doesn't come out of either of our pockets. So say your wife is going to buy a, a banjo. Well, you'd click on my link on the description below where it says uh, link to this cool cap with the earplugs in it. And you don't even buy this thing, but she decides, you know what? I was going to get him a, a $20 cap or a $30 cap with... Uh, earbuds in it or with speakers in it to listen to his music with on his phone. But instead, I'm gonna buy this here $1,000 banjo, but I'm gonna wait and do it tomorrow. So if she buys that banjo, I get a commission for it because she went through my link. So subscribe and buy a banjo.